worry about you, my man. Mm. It's not sleep. a good morning for him. I mean, you can't take it this serious, man. I do. I get, I get, I get emo- I'm emotionally invested. Ooh. Like Skip with the Cowboys. You know how you can't sleep when the Cowboys get the brakes beat off them? Mm-hmm. But yeah. that doesn't happen that often. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, uh, yeah. Jim, right. what happened last night? Well, I mean, part of it, too, was that, you know, the Cavs started off so well, you figured, okay, here we go. But throughout the course of not only this, this series, but also, I think, the playoffs in general, Cavs couldn't hold a lead. But it's two things to me, I think, since game two that Cleveland hasn't adjusted to or the adjustment from Golden State. One, the insertion of JaVale McGee. I think it's huge because what he does, he takes away, I think, straight line drives. Last night, game two, guys got to the basket, but McGee was there. So guess what? Now, instead of getting a layup, you had to throw like a little floater in the Mm -hmm. lane or do something like that. So I thought that insertion and his energy on offensive end is huge Mm -hmm. for Golden State. But the other thing is the Cavs haven't made the adjustment in two games yet to the pick and roll, the slip picks of Golden State. LeBron talked about making mistakes and how this Golden State team can make you pay when you make a mistake, a lack of communication. And to me, the the inability for Cleveland to guard the pick and roll. But Steve Kerr did an outstanding job. I got some tape here that shows just a couple of plays in regards to the slip screen. You you got tape? I got tape. Uh Uh-oh, now we're all in trouble. No, here we go. That's what I do. It's right here. Steph didn't even set the pick, okay? Now you got a backdoor opportunity. So what happens in these situations is that as a, as a back man playing defense, okay, Draymond Green goes to go to the pick, he brushes, the back man jumps up, and now he slips open, and now it's a layup. Right. So the adjustment that Steve Kerr saw was that instead of putting body to body on the pick and roll, we're going to force Cleveland to have to make a decision which they haven't adjusted to yet. And those little layups at key times of the game breaks the momentum mm-hmm. for and the spirit for the Cleveland Cavs. You can see it on their body language. Too. So offensively, they're going to struggle. So you have to have your defense on point. And when that's not happening and you're giving up those things, that's where Golden State beats you. Yeah, They get you from three, but when they get those layups, it's demoralizing to a defensive team. They had 10 dunks on the very play that you're talking right. about, that little slip. And the thing was, they started wanting to try and trap Kevin Durant to get the ball out of his hand. The guys, like, as you mentioned, he's not touching the guy. He's just pretending, and then he slips to the basket. Okay, I see that. I come, and then there's Draymond, or there's Iggy, backdoor for a dunk, or Sean Livingston. Um, well, we're, Kevin Durant was unbelievable. But his unbelievable is what we've seen LeBron James do routinely throughout these playoffs. It just happened to be game three on the biggest stage, when Steph Curry, he was the runaway. Everybody's talking about, well, mm. they might as well just go ahead and put Steph's name on the trophy. They were. Yeah. And, and Kevin Durant's like, well, hold, mm. like, hold up. Hold that team. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, 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 no. Skip, I don't know if you saw this. When he hit that three and it made it, uh, put him down by six going into the half, yeah. Steph Curry came out there. KD say, I got, got you. you. I saw it. I got you. Yep. Yeah. Man, that's a luxury to have. Mm-hmm. Boy, y'all show with Bron. You know what? You, boy, that would be a luxury. Bron. Here we go he again. had it. Huh. That would be a luxury. Give them credit. Golden State is a, is a different animal, Skip, because they can hit you with the three, and then when you try to hug up on the three, and I saw Clay put the ball on the floor last night, See more him, last night, basket, because yeah. he's like, hey, y'all try to guard. Okay, y'all going to push up on me hard? I'm just going to go and get mm-hmm. to the basket. Steph is trying to get to the basket even more. This is a different animal. And, but think about this. I, then I'm going to let you take it over, Skip. We just had a debate, the previous segment, about who's going to be the MVP, Steph or KD. And that's what LeBron's up against. Hmm. Yeah. Last night, game three, pivotal, crucial, turning point. Who had the most help, KD or LeBron? I submit to you, LeBron had more help than KD did last night. Am I right? Well, no, I know. Kevin well, Love had 20 he, no, no, and 13? No, he, he had guys that scored. But the threats were still on the court that opened up the opportunities for KD. Whether Steph and Clay are hitting shots, you still have to honor that and you still you? keep that space. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got – because that big three that Steph hit, you knew it was going to happen sooner or later. The drive that Clay got, crucial time. So, yeah, the numbers may not have been there, Skip, but those threats force you to have to play defense a different way. So, Steph Curry – 
went one for 10 from mm-hmm. three. And Clay Thompson had the quietest 10 points maybe of his playoff career because I don't even remember it except for that one basket, him scoring the other nine. Or mm-hmm. s- he had a big three in the corner, too. He had a three in the corner. Yep. And Draymond Green had all of 10 points and two total rebounds in the game. And the Cavaliers once again crushed the Golden State Warriors on the backboards because they are clearly the more physical mm-hmm. team. And yet and still, the best player on the floor by far on both ends of the floor was one Kevin Durant. He saved everything about Golden State. And what drove me craziest was, and we've talked about this earlier, I'll bounce it off you, I wanted to see LeBron James' body language be, I'm taking Kevin Durant in the fourth quarter. Because younger LeBron, I saw him against my Spurs. It it could be Tony Parker. And he'd say, I'm going to take him out of the game. And he would literally suffocate Little Tony Parker, where Tony couldn't even dribble the ball past half court. Took Derrick Rose in the Eastern Conference Finals. He did. That's right. He'll just say, now, that you can't do it for four quarters, but you can do it for one, which is the fourth quarter. Yes. And I wanted to see him last night say, I'm fighting over every pick. I don't care who's coming. It was Steph Curry coming to pick him. Just, just, and, and LeBron was just giving up and giving in to the picks. Like, okay, I'll just fall back and go behind the pick. And you take him, Rodney. You take him, Kevin Love. No, you take him, LeBron. Set the tone for your team. And to all your points, remember, we're still talking about a team in the regular season that was the 29th worst defensive team in pro basketball. 29 out of 30, that was LeBron's team. And LeBron had a poor defensive year by his standards. You're talking about how he rests on defense. But last night, when it's time, this is the series. It's in the balance. And you can't fall back behind picks because LeBron, high basketball IQ, would say, okay, I I got Kevin because Kevin's bringing the ball up the floor every time he's playing point guard. And LeBron's, you know, hunkered down like I got him. And then all of a sudden, Steph had come to pick. He'd say, okay, I fall back. No, I I, I agree with you on this. What frustrated me yesterday was watching – the willingness of the calf, not just LeBron, to switch a screen when you didn't have to. You're right. Because the game plan is, okay, we're going to switch on That's the screen. Fine. I, but, got it. I don't get it. But, but what I... Cleveland was doing and what Golden State was doing, when the screen was coming together, really wasn't a screen. So you could get over the top, especially when it was high out, and you can keep and maintain yeah. the current defender. So you kind of sell yourself out a little bit. And I think as players, you know, we'll take the easy way out. Mm-hmm. A lot of time. And if, if the game plan is to switch, you're going to switch. switch it. But really, when you don't have to, you don't have to put a Kevin Love three or four consecutive plays on Kevin Durant up top. Mm-hmm. Now that breaks down the defense. That When I'm watching the game and get frustrated, to me, I'm sitting there watching that. I know the Cavs are not as capable offensively to stay the fire, firepower we're going to stay. But one thing they can do is take away and negate on the defensive end some of those opportunities. That keeps you close enough sure. that you can make some plays offensively late. But what game. do you have to be able to do? See, a lot of people think defense is about is about athleticism. It's about communication and the thought think- process. No, it's also just about your heart and your yeah. guts. But if, they, you, but, if you do want to play defense but, or not. But, Skip, you got to understand, okay, this is what they're doing. They're really not picking. They're just half-hearted. They're they basically are, slipping half- it. Yeah. So, basically, he's just coming up there to flash me, and he's going to roll to the basket. Yep. So, okay, this is the way we're going to do it now. I know they're not. I'm just going to hug up. So when he starts to come, he starts to roll back, you stay there. I'm going to hug up on KD. I'm going to make it a little tougher for him. Everybody. They were sitting that peak damn near at half court, and LeBron was falling back to the top of the key. No! You don't have to. You don't have to. No. They're not going to. Look, Kevin Durant had it going, but he ain't about to shoot from half court. So hug up on him. Uh, Steph might. Steph, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, another thing that hurts this team I was watching, I don't know if you noticed this. Notice when Cleveland gets a defensive rebound, who pushes the ball all the time up the court? Or 90% of the court yeah. time? LeBron yeah. James. Yeah. And where that where that hurts you is you have an opportunity to get a fast break, right. but immediately they try to they gotta give it to LeBron. Right. The the lack of having that other person on the court that can push it really quick. Draymond will bring it up. Iggy will bring it up. Think about how many Steph. times you take away some maybe some easy mm-hmm. – I'm not seeing even later. What if you get down real quick? Okay, I got you. I, th- I just think their whole mindset and game plan is to keep so, it. To, take so, like, but no, no, I understand that. But there are times when yeah. you can exploit that. Especially him, if, if you get him out on the break. Especially at yeah. home, too. Yeah. Okay? But not having that other player in those situations, I think, really inhibit – Cleveland, let's say when they having some struggles offensively, to getting some more easy baskets. That's they why just they don't have. It. That's where they really risk Kyrie, because Kyrie could get the ball and he's gone. Mm. And plus, he could finish it. Really, 
only LeBron and Kyrie could finish at the rim. They're not finishing. JR is not bringing the ball up the court and finishing at the rim. Right. Mm. George Hill, that's not what they're good at. Mm. Now, if you got somebody open, you know, Kyle Corbin, you got guys running the wings, they can push it and kick. Right. But Kyrie was a guy that could get the ball and he could finish. LeBron can finish. But we're not done yet. Mm. They we're not they not. I, I like how you said that you know, you know, go get your head home. If they don't if they don't make the adjustments to that to that slip, slip screen and that pick and roll and how they're gonna play it, it's, mm. again, it's gonna be long because all they're gonna do, listen. As well as Cleveland play, you look at it down five or six points at halftime. Think about the body length, how you feel. We've shot our butts off. We've mm-hmm. done everything right. We're only down. We're only up five or six points. They have to figure out defensively, I think, how they're going to play that. They're going to trap it hard or they're going to stay at home. Ty Lue is going to have to make it, even push them out a little bit further. Because right now, the way Golden State is operating their offense, those passes from the top, they're short enough that they can hit them quick. If you push them back a little bit, now those are longer passes. Mm-hmm. It takes longer for the ball to get there, and maybe they can rotate over. So all I know for sure is that the Cleveland Cavaliers had a one-point lead with 3-11 left in that basketball game. And if you're better than Michael Jordan, you get him home. And you got blown out really 14-5 to down the stretch, just the way last year in game three you lost down the stretch 11 to nothing. You just got to get it home. You got to take the game over. Well, you know the difference is, too. You see Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant can get into that mid post yeah. and that turnaround jump shot mm-hmm. inside the lane. He had two real – LeBron struggles at that part of it because he's so physical and powerful mm-hmm. that he never developed that finesse part right in the middle of the lane because at the beginning of the game, they isolated LeBron right at the elbow mm-hmm. in the middle so he can take over. Right. At the end of the game, it was Kevin Durant getting in those situations, those easy – those two-point buckets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was able to convert. LeBron on the opposite end had some of those opportunities yeah. but just wasn't as comfortable mm-hmm. shooting those shots or converting those shots as KD. Mm. Leave it there. Jim, thanks for joining us. You got it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.